So one day a boy's hiking up on the mountain and he notices a man sitting by a cave and he starts walking towards him. And as he gets closer to him, he can hear him laughing. He can hear him having a good time. And he gets close to him and he asks him, why are you wearing those glasses? Why are you laughing so much? Why does it look like you're having such a good time? The old man tells him, oh, these are my special glasses. These glasses help me see all the special things in my life. They make me feel good. They make me feel happy. They make me say yes to life, to love, to happiness. Yes to my family, to all those people, my friends and family, all those people around me that invite me and, and reciprocate love to me. They help me say yes to life and to happiness. Here, try them on. So the boy puts them on and instantly feels happy and joyful and he sees all the good in his life and he's grateful for everything life had, has given him. He feels good with his mom, with his dad, with his brother and sister. They invite him over for dinner. He says yes. They give him hugs and smiles and love and he says yes. He says yes to the love, to the happiness, to all the good in his life. So he takes off the glasses and asks the old man, what do the blue ones do? All the blue ones, they make you see all the bad in your life. They make you remember all the things that you don't want to remember. The boy thinks about it and he's like, hmm, I think I'm going to try them on. So he puts them on and instantly spirals into this anger and, and resentment and frustration and depression. And when he tries to think about his mom and his dad and his, his brother and his sister, he just feels anger and resentment for everything they did to him. And all he can remember is all the things they, they did to him growing up. And he just can't find any happiness. And he's really, really trying to find something. But he's just angry and he's feeling depressed and rage and Oh, he, in a panic, he takes off. Why would anybody want to wear those glasses? They make you feel like shit. They're depressed. I can't even, I can't even see any, any love in my life. The old man looks at him and says, Unfortunately, some people have been wearing the same glasses their entire lives. They don't even know what color they're wearing anymore. So I have a family member who was raised by very condescending parents. She grew up in a very toxic environment. Every day was yelling and screaming and, and put downs on a, on a daily basis. Every day was, you're such a bad girl. You can never do anything right. No one's ever gonna love you. And as a result, she grew up with a very low self-esteem. Feelings of, I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. No one's ever gonna love me. Feelings of not loving herself. Have you ever felt like this before? Then she finally gets married and it was toxic. Every day was yelling and screaming. Every day was finding something wrong with her husband. Every day was always a manifestation of what was going on on the inside. See, on the inside, she kind of had conflicting beliefs. She wanted to be loved and cared for, but deep down inside, she had already created beliefs that she's not lovable or that she doesn't deserve love. See, what really happened is her mind could not allow her to see all the good in her husband. She couldn't see all the times he was there when she was sick. She couldn't see all the times he was there to help her with the kids, to pay the bills, to help her with their business, to help her create the life she always wanted to have. So it was just a constant rejection of his love, a constant rejection with hate, with revenge, with, with anger, all a resistance to what was going on on the outside to actually match what was going on on the inside. How many guys follow? So here's the question. How does this happen to you? Where in your life do you, are you not able to see what's going on because of the beliefs you created? Where in your life do your beliefs sabotage you from the things you actually want in life? Think about that. See, the problem is most of us don't know what our beliefs are at a conscious level. So we don't understand why we think and feel the way we do. So how do you know if you have any kind of negative, limiting, or disempowering beliefs? So let's start with thoughts. Check in with your thoughts daily. Any kind of doubt that you have towards something, doubt whether or not you're capable of doing something, doubts whether or not you're good enough or smart enough or whether or not you deserve something, there's some kind of limiting belief behind that. Any kind of recurring struggle in your life, there's some kind of limiting belief behind that. And then check in with your feelings. Feelings, chronic feelings of fear, of shame, of not deserving, there's limiting beliefs behind that. So think about that right now. Where in your life do you have any kind of constant, chronic feelings of shame, of feelings of whether or not 
you deserve something, whether or not you're good enough for something, for something that you want in life. Think about that right now. You see, this is happening because somewhere in your mind, you have a negative or limiting belief that's contradicting one of the desires you have in life. And that contradiction creates a gap in between your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. And that creates some kind of negative feeling inside your, inside your body. So let me give you an example. Have you ever had a computer that freezed on you? You ever wonder why it would freeze on you? Well, typically it's because it was processing too much information too fast, or it was an old software contradicting a new software. And so that's kind of the same thing that's going on in life. You ever wonder why you slow down in life, why you feel like life comes to a halt and you don't make any progress in your life? Well, basically what's happening is you have an old software, which are all the beliefs you created while you were growing up, are now contradicting or conflicting with all your new desires in life. So in the example I gave earlier about, about the family member, you have all these, she has all these negative beliefs about whether or not she deserves to be loved, but on the outside, the desires is, I wanna be loved. And so there's a contradiction. That contradiction is what kind of puts a halt into your life. And that's what happens in life with success, with happiness, with relationships. Every time we enter into one of these new dynamics, we are now operating from an old operating system when we grew up uh, in, our, in our childhood. How many of you guys follow? Say I. So when there's a conflict in your operating system is when you start getting these weird feelings. You're confused, you're doubtful, you start to experience fear. So you're scared that you're not good enough for the business or whether or not you're smart enough to go to school or for that job. And so when you start to experience these feelings, the cover up here is your mind starts to make excuses. Excuses why you can't take action, why you can't do what you need to do to accomplish that goal. And so really what the excuse is, it's a cover up, it's a defense mechanism to prevent you from feeling the shame behind failure, the shame behind rejection, the shame behind I'm not good enough. Do you understand how that works? So I want you to think about that. Really think about it. Where in your life do you avoid taking action? Because of fear, because you're scared that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not worthy enough, you don't belong, any kind of negative or limiting belief. Where in your life is that happening right now? Okay? And then I want you to think about this. What have these beliefs and what have these feelings cost you? What tension, drama, disconnection, rejection, push away has this caused in your relationship? Where, what fears of rejection and not good enough, where has it stopped you from taking the next step in your life in terms of starting a business, going to school, applying for a better job? Okay, where has that stopped you in your life? With your health, with losing weight, okay? So let's take it a step further. Where will your life be in five to 10 years if you don't do anything about it? If you continue to have, not even to have, but to allow these limiting beliefs, these negative feelings, if you continue to allow them in your life to control your actions, where will you be at in five to 10 years? 15 years, 20 years. How old will you be in 20 years from now? Is that how you want your life to be the same way it is now in that same direction with those same limitations? Think about that. So when are you going to do something about it? So when I went back to analyze all the things I was avoiding in life, I was able to see where my negative and limiting beliefs were. And once I discovered them, I was able to do something about them and change them. And that's when my life went to a whole nother level. And that's the same thing that can happen for you. Once you sit down and do the work and analyze what's stopping you in life and what your limiting beliefs are, you're able to do something about it. The sky's the limit after that. So imagine finally being able to live the life you always wanted to have, to go after all of life's endeavors and go after all your dreams, not being held back by an unconscious pattern from the past that was created at childhood, your negative beliefs. So really quick, before we get into the lesson, go ahead and drop a comment below 
and let me know where you've been stuck. Let me know where the constant struggle has been in your life and what your limitations, what your self limitations have been, what your negative and limiting beliefs were. Go ahead and do that right now while I set up. Okay, so now we're gonna break down beliefs using the who, what, why, where, when, and how framework. So let's start with the who. Who are we talking about? We're talking about you, okay? We're talking about your beliefs and we're gonna go into deeper on how beliefs are created and when and where did you create them. So what are beliefs? Beliefs are how the mind assigns a meaning, draws a conclusion, and builds the program. Okay, what program are we talking about? Why do we create beliefs? It's the life operating system. So think about AI. AI is a computer system that's learning simultaneously as the information is being fed to it. Okay, so if you were to go into a new world, you know, remember, if you remember the movie uh, Avatar, so pretend you went into another world or another planet, you start at zero. So your mind has to learn how to function and adapt into this world. How does it do it? It does it by creating meaning, drawing conclusions, and then building the program. What program are we talking about? We're talking about your belief operating system, but really what it is, it's your life operating system. You're a new baby born into this world. You need to learn and func how to function into this new world. That's why our mind is creating beliefs. Now, where, are belie where do beliefs get stored? Beliefs get stored in the subconscious mind. We talked about that in the previous video about the subconscious mind and how it sabotages us from the things we want in life. So the subconscious mind means you have no awareness. So think about this. Think about how the subconscious mind works. Well, let, let's backtrack real quick. What is the function of your subconscious mind? The function is to automize, to systemize, to efficientize all your thoughts, your emotions, your experiences, your daily habits. Okay, it, it's, it, it builds in in a way where you don't have to think about it anymore. So you can Think about whatever you're going to think about in your in your conscious mind and your awareness and the subconscious mind will take over. So really quick, how the subconscious mind works. This morning when you went to wash your hands, think about that. Which hand did you use? Left or right? Did you look down? You remember that? I don't remember anymore. It becomes so automatic that we have no awareness to what we are, what we're doing in that moment in order to operate. Right? The one that trips, trips me out the most is um, every time I get in the car and I put on the seatbelt, I grab the seatbelt and I put it right in. Think about that. When was the last time you actually looked down to put the seatbelt on? And yet, every single time, every single time, I mean, I can't remember the last time I've missed the seatbelt, unless it was a new car I got in and I didn't know where it was. But it's automatic, it's automatic. There is no awareness. That is the same way beliefs get created, which makes them dangerous because we're not, as humans, we're not aware of 80% of the beliefs that we created, yet we're operating on them every single day. So that's what we're here to talk about. How about the when? When do beliefs get created? So the when is childhood. Between zero and seven, we start to build what's called the core beliefs, the foundation of how we operate in life daily. Between 7 and 17, and this isn't a fixed number, you know, it could be 16, 17, 18, 20, even, even in our 20s, we're creating new beliefs. So between this age, we are now developing our organized beliefs, our category beliefs, or our belief sets. So they all build on the core beliefs, and we start to build sets, organized beliefs, in categories of our life. And we'll, we'll talk about that right now. How are beliefs, how do beliefs get created? So now we're going deeper. Beliefs get created through your environment and through experience. So just like we mentioned before, something happens to you, you assign a meaning to it, and then you draw a conclusion. Once you draw a conclusion, it goes into your mind program. So your mind builds some kind of neural connection uh, and then it stores it into the subconscious mind, okay? So if we go deeper, talking about the environment and your experience. The first way of how beliefs get created is through conditioning. If you watched the previous video, the monkey story I used, I used on how uh, monkeys got conditioned is how we got conditioned in life through constant repetition of something. The story that's been used for ages has been 
Ivan Pavlov's dog, okay, a scientist that was, um, he was trying to track digestion in dogs and when they digest and how the body, how the dog's body breaks down food. And what was happening was they started to notice that every time somebody went in with a white coat, the dogs would start to salivate, even though they didn't have food. So the dogs were conditioned to believe when somebody walked in with a white coat and had food in their hands, the dogs knew it was time to eat. So their body would prepare them and the, and the tongue or however that works would start to salivate. So Ivan concluded that we conditioned the dog to, to believe that every time somebody walked into the room, it was time to eat and the dog would start to salivate. So that's a form, that's a way of how we get conditioned, how we get, uh, how we create beliefs is through conditioning. The next way is through association or conclusions or judgments. Thousands of years ago, a caveman, a caveman is in the new world. He sees, uh, he's hungry. He sees a new tree. There's purple berries on it. He walks over there and he eats them. 30 minutes later, he's throwing up and he has stomach contractions. What is his conclusion? That berry tree is poisonous. Through association, his mind created the belief that that tree is bad for you. I always tell the story how <clears throat> Years ago, a friend of mine came over to uh, help me program a software that we were building and he had the stomach flu and he told me he had the stomach flu. He wasn't feeling well. I just didn't know that that was contagious. At that time, that day we had, um, we had just bought Popcornopolis out here in LA. It's a pretty popular spot that make really, really good popcorn. So I gave him a cup of the caramel popcorn. He didn't finish it. And the next day without me thinking, I just grabbed the cup and I started eating it. That day I went to Tommy's with another friend and, uh, and we ate Tommy's burgers, you know, with Sloppy Joe, whatever it's called. And anyways, that night I got sick and I start throwing up all night, literally for like seven, eight hours. And it was all Tommy's, <laughs> all Tommy's burgers and Sloppy Joe's and you name it. What happened in my mind? I, I didn't want to go to Tommy's for years. I think it took 10 years for me to want to go back to Tommy's because I concluded that I got sick because of Tommy's, right? So that's a form of how we create beliefs is through association, through judgments, through conclusions, through association. Of, if that happens, then this happens. Another way is repetition. Now let's get into your childhood. So let's say uh, you need to help with your homework and uh, you always, whenever, every time you went with your mom or dad to ask for help, they would always ask you, damn, why are you so dumb? And then the next week, again, you ask them for help. Why are you so dumb? You follow? So your mind starts to draw conclusions of, I'm not smart enough. I'm being questioned all the time. Why am I so dumb? Why am I not smart enough? I must not be good enough for school. I must not be good enough for life. Does that make sense? And the last is through emotional trauma, probably the biggest and strongest of all the belief systems. Let's talk about death. Let's say you were, uh, you were five, six, seven, eight years old. And it doesn't matter, it could even be 12 years old. And your parents died in a car accident. And because of that, you had to go live with one of your relatives because you didn't have any siblings. Can you imagine the deep feelings of loneliness you would have? What kind of conclusions and beliefs would you create? Uh, I'm not lovable. The world is lonely. I'm lonely. Nobody loves me. Right? So death can create some extreme pain and some extreme belief systems. What about abuse? Emotional, physical, sexual abuse. What kind of beliefs would you create? If you were always being verbally attacked by your parents, by your mom and dad, constantly, what's wrong with you? You're not smart enough. You'll never amount to anything. Ha ha ha. No one's ever going to love you. Can you imagine the belief systems you would create? Physical abuse, sexual abuse. I mean, I don't even have to go in there. What, what kind of beliefs would somebody create if they experience this kind of trauma? Neglect, not being seen or heard by your parents. You know, imagine if your parents never paid attention to you, were never home, uh, would cut you off, never let you talk or speak or, or really let you experience who you, really, who you really are, your authentic self. Can you imagine the belief systems you would create? Abandonment, there's my core wound. Can you imagine what it would feel like to be abandoned? What kind of beliefs you would create? I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, and I'm not smart enough. Uh, I'm lonely, nobody loves me, I'm not lovable, right? Every single one of these experiences goes through your, goes through a belief creation process, which is something happens to you or keeps happening to you. 
something, it means something, it must mean something to a kid who internalizes, a child who internalizes everything that happens as personal as that must mean something's wrong with me, uh, is a negative, is an, it, they're going to form negative beliefs. And then you form a conclusion about reality, about what happened to you, right? So once you form the conclusion, you now created a belief. So when we break down beliefs, beliefs are either empowering or disempowering. Empowering is I am good enough. I am smart enough. I am strong enough. I can do this. I can be rich. Uh, I am lovable, right? Those are empowering to your life and to you uh, accomplishing your goals and your dreams. Then we get into disempowering, okay? The human experience. Disempowering beliefs are seen as negative or limiting or disempowering beliefs. In some way or another, that belief is limiting you from getting what you want or from, or from experiencing happiness in life, right? So when we break down the beliefs, beliefs are a belief operating system, okay? At this point, we're, we're, we start to categorize them once we start to get older. So beliefs of in your relationship, right? Are you lovable? Um, does he love you? Does she love you? Am I good enough to be loved? Beliefs in, uh, let's say with regards to money, um, are you good enough to earn money? Uh, do you deserve money? Do you deserve to be rich? Are you good enough to be rich? Are you smart enough to start that business? Right? What's coming up for you? How about with your health? What beliefs do you have right now with your health? Beliefs of, uh, on an emotional level, beliefs about yourself. I mean, we can go through categories and categories and categories, right? These are all category beliefs. So they all form, each of these categories we talked about is like your, the apps on your phone. Let me grab that real quick. So the software is your belief operating system. The category beliefs are the apps on your phone. These beliefs carry with them very specific sets of belief that tell you how to operate in your relationship, that tell you how to operate when you go after money, that tell you about your health and your ability to lose weight and your ability to bounce back from illness or disease with your emotions, right? And with yourself. So these are our part of the belief operating system, which really is your, well, why isn't this thicker? which really is your life operating system. How you specifically function in your life, in your reality, based on how the events that you went through, through the ways that you, that you went through, that you created all these beliefs in your childhood and now become your beliefs. You guys follow? So when we start to break down beliefs, really what we're after is this over here. Right there. Are your beliefs disempowering or empowering you to live the life that you want? Think about that right now. What beliefs do you have in your relationship? What beliefs do you have with regards to money, with health, with emotions, with regards to yourself? So this right here is the real problem. This is the area in your life that's holding you back. And this is exactly what we cover in the master class. In the master class, I explain to you why you do what you do, why you feel the way you do, why you think the way you do. Think about this right now. Do you struggle with money right now? Do you struggle in your relationships? Do you struggle with your health? Do you struggle with your mindset? Do you struggle with your purpose in life? These are just symptoms of a deeper problem inside you. These symptoms are not who you are, but just a function of the way you think because of all your life experiences and the beliefs you created. If I went through everything you went through in life, I would think and feel the way you do now. Does that make sense? We are all just a product of the environment we grew up in. It's not your fault you feel the way you do, but it is your responsibility to change it. You can't keep putting your life your happiness, your success, or your fate in another person or in life, waiting for something to come in into your life and change it for you. 
If you want your life to change, then you are the one who needs to change it. You know that already, don't you? So really quick, here's what we cover in the masterclass. Why you struggle in your relationships, finances, health, emotions, or life in general. What stops you from succeeding and getting the things you want in life? How to succeed using our five-step success formula. The one strategy that helps you succeed five times faster than the average person. The masterclass has changed thousands of lives, so don't take it lightly. Look, ultimately, there's two kinds of mindsets in life. There's a fear-based mindset and there's a game-based mindset. One of them is trying to avoid pain. The other one is trying to gain pleasure. The fear-based mindset is going to look for excuses why they don't have time, why it's not going to work. They might even start to discredit things and turn things down just to support their own belief systems that we talked about, just to support their excuses in life. And they might even try to convince you why it's not going to work, convince you why you shouldn't do it. And really, it's just a projection of their own belief systems, a projection of their fears that they're not good enough or they're not smart enough or fear of failure or rejection. Whatever it is, it's just to keep them in their comfort zone and so you don't agitate their own uh, systems of, of not being good enough. They're gonna try to convince you why it's not gonna work. Does that make sense? The game-based mindset, on the other hand, look for every reason why something will work. They understand that everything you want in life has a cost. A cost of time, a cost of money, and a cost of effort. And they're willing to give one, if not all three, to get the things they want in life. And guess what happens when you're willing to put in the work to get the things you want in life? So here's my question to you. Which mindset are you? Which mindset have you been in these last few years? Are you busy avoiding pain and making all these excuses as to why you can't have the things you want in life? Or are you busy looking for pleasure? Are you busy looking to gain something in life? Are you looking for more in life? That's why I put together the masterclass. So you can see what the real problem is underneath all this, how it's holding you back right now. And so you have a clear plan and strategy to follow so you can guarantee you get the success you want in life. Are you ready for that? Look, trying to explain how powerful the masterclass is is like trying to explain one of your favorite movies to an old friend in less than a minute. Think about your favorite movies of all time. Gladiator, uh, Titanic, uh, The Notebook, Avengers, Avatar. I mean, can you imagine trying to explain why uh, Avatar was so amazing in less than a minute? Think about it. Yeah, it was really cool, it was really bright, and there was this guy who was uh, really unhappy with his real life, so he was always fantasizing about being on another planet, being someone else, and uh, recording videos every day, and teaching self-mastery on YouTube every single day, and, and, wait, what? Never mind. Watch the damn masterclass, will you? It's just like watching your favorite movie. You're not gonna know how powerful it is until you watch it for yourself. Okay, here's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so for homework, I want you to write down all the things your parents said to you, good or bad. Right now, we just I want you to start to correlate what was told to you back then and how that is affecting you right now. So write down all the things your parents told you, uh, things that could have been created as beliefs. And then I want you to write down all the feelings that you had in those moments, the things that kept occurring or, or traumatic events, things that happened uh, at one time, one point in your life. What were the feelings that you had? And then I want you to write down what were the behaviors that you developed because of those feelings? And not just because of the feelings, but what were the behaviors that you developed to avoid those feelings? And that's key because these behaviors in some way or another are affecting you now or being put into your life right now in order to avoid feeling these feelings. And so if you follow this process, you're gonna start linking your past and how it's affecting you right now. Listen, at some point, everyone needs to learn this, either right now by choice or later in life by force. If you know anyone that needs to watch this right now, then pay it forward. Send in this video when you get a chance. You just never know who's going through this in their life right now. I remember I had a friend once whose father would always tell him, what's wrong with you? every time he would get in trouble. And it built deep issues of core shame inside of him. Then in his 20s, he started to work and he attracted a boss that would say the same thing every time he would mess up. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And it would start to trigger these feelings of shame, deep, deep shame, and would mess him up for days at a time. 
Then he finally watched the master class and he started putting the pieces together and understanding what was going on inside him and what that was, how that was affecting him in the outside world. And because of that, he was able to work on his limiting beliefs and work on changing them slowly. Listen, I know some of us have feelings of shame, some deep feelings of shame and unworthiness and beliefs of I'm not good enough or smart enough or whether or not I deserve something in life. At some point or another, we all go through this in our life. We all have our flaws and insecurities we have to deal with, including myself. What's important is that you're doing something about it. If you're watching this video right now, give yourself some credit. Most of the people out there don't do anything about changing their lives. So I honor you. I respect you for being here today. Give yourself some credit. You deserve to be happy in life. You deserve to be loved and successful as well. If you're breathing right now, then you deserve to be loved. You deserve to be happy. But just like everything else in life, change takes time. Change takes work. You can't build a car in less than a week, can you? Then you can't expect your life to change in a week or without putting in the work. Anything is possible with the right tools and with enough time, just like building a car. You don't exactly give up on a car too soon and stop building it before it's finished, do you? Then don't give up on yourself. You're not finished yet. Keep making progress. Keep taking a step every day towards your goals, towards your dreams, towards the healing. Do the work you need to do to change your life today. So just imagine where your life can be at in six months once you work on some of these issues. Imagine having that life you've always dreamed of, creating the future you've always wanted to have, all because you finally did the work you needed to do to change your life today. Are you ready for a breakthrough in your life today? Are you willing to put in the work to get your breakthrough today? Then make sure you take action as soon as this video ends and implement everything we talked about today. So here's the power phrase I want you to say with me today. My beliefs create my reality. My beliefs create my reality. Say that with me a few times out loud. My beliefs create my reality. My beliefs create my reality. You see, affirmations allow us to control our focus and control our state of being. For the rest of this week, I want you to say this power phrase 10 times every day when you wake up and right before you go to sleep. Can you commit to that? Now that you know how you created your limiting beliefs, you can work on these strategies daily. Everyone knows that mastery is achieved by daily practice and discipline. However, by having a deeper level of awareness and understanding of why you do what you do allows you to reach a whole new level in your life. If you're ready to reach that next level, then go ahead and text me at the number below, free MC, so that I can send you that download link. One more time, text free MC to the number below so that I can send you that download link for the free masterclass. Can you do that for me right now? And if you're not in the US or Canada, go ahead and click on the link below this video to get access to the masterclass free for the next 48 hours. Remember, if you like this video, then go ahead and subscribe to our channel so that you can get notified when we release a new mastery video. And if you want our free life tips and strategies or our free guided healing meditation, then go ahead and follow me at the social media accounts below so that you can get access to these immediately. That's it for today. Make sure you finish watching all seven masterclass intro videos so that you can understand how your mind works and how to stop it from sabotaging you in life. Thank you for watching. Namaste. So we just came back from this combo trip a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We had been beach, demo rides to the scene. Um, out of morning on the ocean, it's beautiful. We spent about good four thousand dollars over there. Damn, four thousand um, dollars. You got to spoil it. You got to spoil it. Have fun. We went to the steakhouse this last weekend. Mm -hmm. Had hundred dollar steaks, appetizers, drinks. Had to finish off with dessert. Walk away a little good, like four fifty bill. Oh my um, God, four hundred fifty in dinner, nephew. What are you doing? You're spoiling her, man. You can't do this. You can't. If, if, if you if you keep paying for everything, she's always gonna expect you to pay for everything, man. Like no, bro. Like a, a woman, a woman should should it should be 50 50. She should take care of you too. You you, you can't treat her like a little princess, bro. Because then you always that's the expectation you set that she's always gonna have to. You're always gonna have to take care of her like a little princess. You un you understand what I'm saying? I feel you. It is a lot of money all the time. All right. Well, we'll check that. Hold on. She's calling me right now. Uh, I'll call you back. All right, Nev. All right. Hello? Yeah. What's up, babe? Yeah, I'm at the office. Yeah. Why do you want me to put on the red glasses? 
I don't want to put on the red glasses. Oh, you know what? Okay, I'll put on the red glasses. Yeah. No, you're at the dealer right now? It's a Jaguar. Which one? The F25T? No, black on black? Yeah, I got my checkbook. Why? Really? How much is it? Okay, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Where you at right now? You're a galpin. Galpin Jaguar? Something like 10 minutes away. Okay. How much is it? 55,000, okay. You got all the upgrades. Wow, that's fantastic. Of course, yes, baby, yes. Okay. I'm gonna drop off the check right now. Okay. All right, baby. Okay. See you in a bit. What? Happy life, happy, what the? Mm -hmm, that's the beat right there. Hey guys, thanks for staying until the end. Make sure you follow me at the Instagram below to get my free daily life strategies. Click on the subscribe button right there. Make sure you finish watching the masterclass series over here. And if you're ready for the masterclass today, go ahead and text me at the number below so I can text you back that download link. Are you ready for a breakthrough? Okay, let's get it.